We're joined by Ashraf Lighty, who is Chief Global Strategist at City Index. So Ashraf, always nice to see you. Um, we're following some of this action for who the BOJ could see as their next um, head of the bank. What difference does it make to you? Do you think there is really market running as to uh, who's the least dovish and who is the most dovish? Yeah, there is uh, Mr. Iwata and the Kuroda, who everybody who has been trading FX, uh, who is a big insider of uh, uh, the finance ministry, and uh, and uh, and Ms. Minister Muto. Uh, but I thought there was this rule, this unwritten rule in in Japan, wherever there is a speculation or whenever there is a candidate who is increasingly speculated about by the press, they will not go for him. And I think that was the reason when I think in 2000, uh, well, when the last person who was going, I believe it was in 2008, the last person who was about to be tipped to be the governor was actually uh, not gone with because the press was being speculated about. Anyway, at the end of the day, uh, regardless of the dovishness spectrum, regardless of how dovish or how, uh, how hawkish this person is going to be, what is very important, what people need to know, is that uh, the appointment of the head of the BOJ is part of Mr. Abe, who was appointed by the people, and a big part of his election campaign was to rev up CPI was to weaken the pound, uh, uh, actually, wow, to weaken the yen. So no four or five sentences from the G7 or the G20 is going to change that. But and uh, yen weakness is here to stay. But Ashraf, regardless of who gets the nod for the BOJ governor, as you correctly pointed out, it's going to be extremely important to get CPI to the levels of 2%. Hasn't been done in the last 20 years. Why should it be uh, done now? Uh, well, some people said, why should we go for a QE3 right now in the U.S.? Why should we go for QE4 in the U.K.? Why? why well, uh, this time it's, 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 it's very different. I think, uh, you know, when you get to a point where the Japanese car makers are having big losses, when the Japanese are basically uh, fed up of the same old uh, strong yen, uh, you know, where it goes up during earthquakes. It goes up during uh, the least uh, uh, needed of, of the situations. And what is very important is that the G7, the rest of the world, is in the side of Japan to rev up, uh, to drive up CPI. And actually, w what is very interesting, you know, just like uh, the U.S. is uh, ba basically targeting unemployment, maybe the next head of the Bank of England is going to target nominal GDP. The Japanese have their own version and it's called CPI and it's been written black over white on the website of the Bank of Japan. CPI is one to two percent. Is one to two percent. Well actually they want to focus on the two percent part of the definition and that needs to happen. This is one of the evolutions we've seen in central banks, wider mandates but also uh, just less of a veil in terms of transparency. Uh, you know, one of the issues the Democrats previously blocked Muto's appointment. I think this is really interesting. The, and the reason they blocked it back in 2008 uh, for this particular job was because he was a former finance minister and they're saying this brings less independence to the BOJ board. Which central bank is independent in Who are we kidding? Uh, I think the independence was being put in the charter of the Bank of Japan. I think it was in the mid-90s. And I think the last true in the head of the Bank of Japan, a true independent, was Mr. Hayami. Uh, Masaru Hayami, I think he was in 2000s. And he was, the, he was the only one who was really stood to the government. Uh, but I think the countries have their uh, priorities. And if you want to wage a very efficient currency war, you need to have uh, your own goal. I think there was some disconnect in terms of communication. Yesterday we heard from the Prime Minister that uh, that we may be changing or may be seeing a change in the BOJ laws if the 2% inflation target will not be met today. The Finance Minister contradicted those statements. There's certainly an issue of communication. What, what do you believe in? What are we going to see? I think it will have to be ironed out. I think uh, there is something, I think the uh, second phase or the next phase of yen weakness is going to happen when Mr. Abe is expected to win the upper house uh, in the elections this summer. He only has one of the two houses. I think that's when he has the full, the full majority. I think that would probably be the next leg. If people think that, you know, dollar yen is not going to 100, euro yen is not going to 132, I think we may get a, a case of a yen rebound, a slight rebound, I think at a time when equities will take a break, probably April, May. But I think once we get to those June elections, I think the next phase would be, and it would be open ground for 
Abe to do what he wants with the Bank of Japan and with the Charter and with the CPI. So the top levels we're looking at? Um, I think we could even go to probably 102, 103 for uh, dollar yen. And I think the rebound in the euro, which we at City Index have been calling for uh, since October, is not done yet, especially against the yen. Okay.